Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. Finally made it to gosh dang heck in Pastoria City. As Scarlet follows around, we're gonna go ahead and explore the city a little bit. You can already see that there's a Team Galactic Grunt being a goon hanging around. So let's go ahead and do a tour of Pastoria. See what's up for grabs potentially. Wow, lucky guy. I'm sure it's very wholesome. Okay. <laughs> so apparently we need to give Pofin to our team members in order to get them a scarf. I don't know if if even one of our like earliest Pokemon Let's, uh, let's use Steven. I know that Steven was one of the Pokemon that we caught pretty early. Let's see if Steven is good enough to get a scarf. It's a little chilly out here in the winter time. Okay, so I'm assuming it's all about Povins. Two things I don't care about, Povins and scarves. So there's that. So interestingly, as I play through this game, recently had an opportunity to try out the new Pokemon Arceus Legends, Legends Arceus, whatever order of words those are. Pretty fun, I enjoyed that. Speaking of things you enjoy, if you're enjoying this channel and the series that I'm putting out, would love your support and help. Liking the videos, commenting, subscribing, watching a bunch all at once if you can. Whatever the gosh dang YouTube algorithm has chosen to be its soup du jour and how it organizes videos and punishes people un unnecessarily. I have no idea. But uh, yeah, so we're in Pastoria. It does have a gym you can see over there. We'll check that out in a moment. But first, nerds! Okay, so there are paths of transportation within the Great Marsh, which is to the north. We'll go back to that in a little bit. But first, berries! Who doesn't love berries? It's very exciting. It's always fun if you can have somebody pluck your berries. Still, once again, looks like this studio did cheap out and really doesn't want to have the sideways spray duck in animation because there's a rock right there and there could definitely be a spot for us to have a cute little self using our, our watering pail, but no. Okay, so... Apparently, there's a TM slash HM within the Great Marsh called Default. And thankfully, it's been converted to auto HM status because putting it on a Pokemon in the original Diamond and Pearl was a huge waste. So there's that. So here we go. We do have a heart scale. And we can teach any of our Pokemon a previously learned move. I don't know if I have anything in particular that I'd like, but it could be any of them. So that is interesting for sure. Um, I don't know if any of my Pokemon are actually have been on the team long enough that they have moves that I missed. This is more useful. Oh, well, speak of the Diablo. Ah, I appear to be wrong. So Buster here, the Floatzel, we could have taught it Ice Beam or Crunch, which is a pretty nice move. I actually go ahead and go through with Crunch. I don't think we have anything that really does much. Also, I'm not entirely sure why... Oh, double hit. It says long tail. I was going to say, I, I just read vines or a tentacle, and I was like, well, I don't think Floatzel has those. But Floatzel has a pretty good attack stat, and it's pretty quick. So having a strong dark-type move, a strong independent dark-type move, you can get hard scales in abundance down in the old underground. Now I think I do have Ice Beam, maybe? There's a lot of moves that I haven't really been teaching my team just because I didn't feel like it. But now that I do have Buster on the team, I feel like Ice Beam is a solid choice. So there's Aqua Ring, Swift, Aqua Jet. Aqua Ring seems kind of pointless. Buster is also relatively fragile, so I feel like... Also, why can Craig learn... Okay. I'm pretty sure that Craig's special attack stat's actually really horrible. Let's go ahead and take a peek at that. Pretty sure that's true. Yeah, so... You could 
pointlessly teach it to your Cranidos? I wouldn't. But what I will teach it to is Steven. I think Steven's attack stat's actually better than his special attack stat, but not by much. And Thunderbolt is substantially better than Spark. So we'll go ahead and do that. Not really in need of doing this, but it is kind of fun. Also, why not teach some fighting moves to Buster? This is just a an extravaganza of move diversity, everybody. Don't you love this? And we'll go ahead and get rid of... Wait. Let's go ahead and get rid of Swift. Swift is an okay move. But, you know. I'm just trying to spice it up. Also, did that say that Scarlet could learn Brick Break? I thought that involved, like, chopping. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Whatever. But I do want to talk briefly about Pokemon Legends Arceus, Arceus Legends, whatever that is. That's a new game. That's pretty fun. I'm not trying to promote it or anything. I'm not going to play it on this channel, at least not in the present, because we're playing Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. But what a neat game. And also neat receiving berries from strangers. We love gifts from people we don't know. You can get them every day, apparently. You can make them into some Pofin, which is awesome if you're into Pofin and things that are pointless. Did we go in here already? I don't remember. I don't think so. We do know about Burmy. I don't have Burmy. Probably not going to catch one. But Burmy is neat. Depending upon where you catch that Burmy, there are different varieties. There's like a, a, a floral Burmy. There's like a wasteland Burmy. There is a... Uh, I don't remember Burmy. We're going to go ahead and talk to this goon. Oh, set something off. Uh-oh. Well, that doesn't sound good. Team Galactic being terrorists right now? What uh, what the H is happening? I hope that's not the case. That's pretty scary, scary actually, especially putting that in a child's game. That's kind of weird. So, the Great Marsh is this game's Safari Zone. So, what's neat is that they do, I believe, change every day. And... In the process, if you use these binoculars, you pay 100 Poké Dollars. You can look through and it's going to kind of give you a, a little bit of a peek into what's available. There's a Hoot Hoot. There's a Wooper. Meryl seems to be a lot of Generation 2 Pokémon. Gold and Silver. There's a Beebrel. Justin Beebrel. A Bidoof. Okay, so that kind of sucks. Those uh, are all horrible. Not... Nah. Okay, maybe they're not all horrible, but... Not super exciting. I'm not entirely sure where the... Ooh, we can get Staravia. That's cool. That's uh, Sharon. Sharon. More Bidoof. Knocked Owl. Evolution of Hoot Hoot. That's fun. And... What else? Finally, more Meryl. Remember Meryl was thought of as the uh, initial evolution or like a counterpart to Pikachu. People called it Pika Blue. There's Azuril, Azuril, the pre-evolution of Meryl. Okay, so nothing terribly exciting from that, but we will explore the Great Marsh, see what it's all about, see why people hoot, holler, and shout. So, thankfully, they share their a plentiful amount of balls with us. I have no idea why they force the character to, to walk like that. Okay, great. So we just get Defog. I thought that we were actually going to have to look for it. So that saves me a lot of time. So I believe this is a an HM move like the others that requires us to have acquired another gym badge. In this case, the one from Pastoria. So once we do have that, we can blow away. So much fog. We're going to be so good at blowing. It's going to be amazing. So we're just going to wander around here. I don't know if there's a time limit or if it's dependent on when you when you run out of balls from your sack. I don't know if that's the way that it is, but it is pretty neat. If you want to go deep into the marsh, if you want to waddle through the goo, maybe take the tram as it destroys the local ecosystem, that's fun. I mean, it's kind of nice that they put a, an NPC in here to remind us about how dangerous it is to 
have corporations destroying our beautiful, beautiful earth. Please don't sue me every corporation. But do your part, everybody, because that's more important than a big company doing this. So there you go. If we wanted to catch Pokemon, we can hit it with our balls. We can bait it out, cover it in, in some goo, or we're going to run away. I'm not entirely sure, but I don't think that there's too many Sinnoh Pokemon in this area. I also don't know if we can use Surf yet, so these little ponds are kind of pointless. So we're not going to be catching any water type Pokemon. But we will waddle through here. I don't entirely know what to expect. We did see through the binoculars what was available, but the options today don't really seem great. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this because I don't need to. You can kind of see what's going on. I'm just gonna try to pick up some of the items. I remember back in my day, the old red and blue, first we get a jar of honey to but in the meantime, in the old red and blue days, the Safari Zone was a pretty pivotal point of the game because I believe that that's where you found Surf and there was an item in there, the Golden Teeth, which for some reason the Warden of the Safari Zone left it. And if you gave him his teeth back, I have no idea, I'm just gonna say Area 5, that sounds great. If you gave him his teeth back, then he would teach you strength. That's pretty neat. Let's go ahead and board this little train. Oh, great. Wasn't that exciting, everybody? Look, we went so far. Classic area five. Let's try that again. Let's go to area one. Maybe that's the back of the park. I was going to make a joke there and just be like, yeah, you know, that's as far as that's as far as things are going to go. That's the way she goes. But I don't want to shortchange you viewers as I waddle around in the in the goop here. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, we have fallen in the goo. Again. Oh my goodness. So yeah, there's those little puddles, I guess, that you can fall into. That's fun. But it seems like the game isn't really offering us much here. These items are kind of basic. Are there trainers? No. Okay, so that's how you win. I didn't know that this was something you could win. But apparently it is. So let's let's wander around a little more. Probably not gonna catch anything here, but this is just kind of neat to show off, I suppose. I remember there being Pokemon that were pretty neat in the original Diamond and Pearl. I'm assuming that it's probably a pretty similar approach, but this was one of the few places, because there weren't Pokemon in the underground like there are now. This is one of the few places you could find Skarupi or Scarlet, the Scorpion, which I thought was neat. But for now, it only appears that we're going to find Meryl and Wooper, which are Gen 2 staples. But for now, this is great. You know, we're really... Okay, so our time is up. They have shown us the Ding Dong. And that's that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Now it does appear that we have a gym battle coming up. So let's go ahead and go to the boxes and see who's going to be the best bets. So I will tell you in advance that you're going to want to prioritize potentially an electric type or a grass type. You'll have types like rock types that aren't great or maybe a ground type that's also not great. So just think about it. Water types aren't super useful in this moment. So I'm just going to swap the team out for now and I'm not really trying to beef up and go in any sort of direction, but I do want to have Pokemon that are maybe going to give us a fighting chance and I'm going to play by the same rules as before. However many Pokemon the gym leader has, which I believe is three, is how many we'll have. So fingers crossed, going to enter the gym now. Hopefully, ooh, hopefully there's not a crazy puzzle. Oh, it's this one. I don't remember this being too bad. But then again, I'm saying that very far removed from remembering how this goes. So this is Crasher Wakes Gym, the water type master. So I warned you, I'm telling you what to expect here. You're going to be going across these little floating pontoons. 
and as you move around, you can hit these buttons, and in doing so, raises and lowers the water. So that's pretty fun, right? This little kid has a very tough spirit. Who's teaching children this? This kid looks like he's between the ages of 6 and 10. Who Who is encouraging children to worry about how tough their spirit is? I'm all for spirituality, but... This kid should just be wondering when he's going to get to play Minecraft again. Or enjoy some Roblox with his buddies. But yeah, I, I briefly jumped into a statement about... What is it? Um, about the Arceus Legends and then I didn't say anything about it. So clearly I got a little distracted. That never happens on this channel. The D-Mike Industries, we pride ourselves on staying the course. But anyway, Arceus Legends. I'd seen some pre-release stuff. I'd watched some of the, the trailers. And I'll be honest, at the time, I just wasn't quite vibing with it. I didn't understand exactly what they were going for. So I was a little disappointed and I didn't really see myself as somebody who would really be interested in that type of a game. I do like open world games, but, you know, for example, when I think of an open world game, I like to think, uh, man, Scarlet has absolute poop for stats. When I think of an open world game, uh, actually, eh, Pin Missile's not very good. I think of Breath of the Wild. I think of Horizon Zero Dawn. I think of God of War, stuff like that. But I was really disappointed at what I was seeing initially. And that was the kind of, I guess, short-sightedness that I had when I was watching the early stuff coming in from the developers and what they were showing in like the Nintendo Directs and whatnot. And I was just like, man, is that what this game is going to be? Like a very half-baked, half-done version of Breath of the Wild with like a Pokemon skin. But I'm happy to admit I was wrong so far. I haven't gotten a ton into it, but it does take place in Sinnoh of old, ye old Sinnoh. And so far, it's been pretty fun. There's a heavy, there's a heavy reliance on catching and I guess like catching Pokemon for sure, but doing it in different ways. There's the quote unquote Pokedex that they have and you're supposed to fill it up in different ways. And the way that you do that is by catching Pokemon multiple of the same kind. You battle them with different types of moves that you can eventually master, all of those types of things. So that's kind of where the game is. I thought that was going to be a really annoying gimmick, but it's not too bad. The battles are quick. The crafting system is pretty, pretty good. It's, it's very reminiscent of a Breath of the Wild. So if you like Breath of the Wild, you'll like this. It's not quite as good, obviously, because that, that game is legendary, but Arceus Legends does have legendaries in it. That's what you're into. So that's fun. But it's enjoyable. There's some new Pokemon that they added to that game, which I think is nice. But back to this game, something that I think is interesting that they changed a little bit is that I believe in Diamond and Pearl, you could approach gyms three, four, and five whenever you wanted to. But in this game, you cannot. You are basically forced to do them in order. In this case, this is gym four. So the levels don't scale as much. Like I would have gone and done the Hearth Home gym with Fantina or Tima, however, whatever her name is. I would have done that up front, but that was not an option. So I was unable to do so, unfortunately. So you're doing the gyms in order that they want you to do. The game is railroading us like joiks, but you know, it is what it is. We'll take what we can get. I'm not super worried about it. Doing the gyms in order as they intended is fine. You'll have games that are going to be a little bit more linear. I mean, Pokemon games in general are pretty linear. It's very... You dummy. It's very... Unexpected for them to not be linear, I guess. Like, you can kind of sequence break a little bit in some of these games, but you're not really supposed to. I mean, you should be able to play the games however you want, but Game Freak is like, mm -mm -mm. you will play them exactly how we intended and you will like it. And that's that. 
So it is what it is. But these games in general, still a lot of fun, however you want to slice them. I think that you could... I want to say that in Platinum, they did give you the freedom to do gyms 3, 4, and 5, which is kind of cool because you get to choose whatever you want to do in what order. But the downside is that the levels are all going to be relatively the same because they're kind of in the middle. So, you know, you're not really going to get as much of a challenge because they all have to kind of hover around like that late 20s, early 30s mark if they're going to be the 3, 4, and 5 gyms, unfortunately. Man, for these being water trainers, they're not really using a whole lot of water moves. That's a little strange. I'm sure the gym leader will, but I ain't scared. We got Steven on our team. Gonna carry the flag for us, I'm sure. I'm gonna try not to lean on Steven too much. I don't want to make this boring. I'm gonna spend some time and hopefully give Bart plenty of experience. We still don't have the Unfortunately, the evolution item for, for Bart. So Bart will remain a Rosalia for now. A Rosalia, however you say it. We'd love to evolve him to Roserade. So I think Roserade is one of the coolest looking Pokemon in this game. And a really nice evolution. I wasn't really too high or too low on Rosalia back when, you know, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald were the mainstays of the Pokemon franchise. Didn't really have a big opinion on it. But as time went on, I was like, you know what? That's a pretty cool Pokemon. And I'm glad they kind of fleshed it out a little bit. All right, so we're back to the OGs here. We're gonna fight more children. I love that. Especially when kids are having fun. That's the best time to fight them, in my opinion. You just gotta catch them when they're at their happiest and then destroy their happiness. That's good, right? That's totally normal. So here we go. Here's the Azurold that I mentioned. Go ahead and use a potion because this is very annoying. Having Scarlet Bing Bong all over the place as Azuril Bing Bong's in front of us. Wait, what was... Oh, that was a potion. I got super confused. I thought I used a super potion. I'm also getting used to having played in Arceus Legends is that the Pokemon in those games, they inflated the HP in the items. So like a potion in that game does 60 to restore your health. So I got really confused just now when I did not also restore 60, but regular potions brought back to earth. They only do 20, so silly me. Whoops, that's okay. So I'm not entirely sure why that was super effective. I want to guess that Azuril is maybe fairy type? I don't think Meryl is, but maybe Azuril is just because it used to be normal in water, which is kind of a weird... No, apparently Meryl is too. I'm not sure exactly what makes it a fairy type, but that's okay. And it's going to show Aqua Ring, which is what we deleted from Buster. I don't mind having moves like Recover, you know, Roost, Aqua Ring. Those are okay, but I'd rather prioritize buffs and debuffs if I can over health recovery moves. Because I'm going to probably have items. And that usually does the trick. We made her groan. We are too much. Not the first time I've heard somebody tell me that. Okay. So it looks like we've just got a couple more trainers left. Maybe just one. Another fisher. Min? Fisherman? Fisher person? Fisher Price? Please don't sue me, Fisher Price. So that's pretty good. Okay, we're going to be facing off against the Goldeen. Goldeen, like I said before, for all you Goldeen stands, I'm sorry. I think Goldeen is boring. Seeking's pretty neat. I want to say that there was maybe a Goldeen pre-evolution in Gold and Silver. I'm not entirely sure. That's like the beta knowledge. You guys, every time you hear that, you're probably like, whatever, nerd. But I think that's pretty cool. Also... The reason why I'm so into that knowledge is because that's my favorite generation of Pokemon. So if you don't like it, you can heck off. I think it's great. Also, Goldeen, setting up a rain dance and using water pulse. Combo attack? All right. Seems like the AI for the game isn't completely brain dead. That's very nice. But speaking of things that are dead, Goldeen, very dead. So here's Barboach. I believe Barboach is the first level 
that evolves into Whiskash. Whiskash is very strange looking. It is about as weird of a fish Pokemon as like Stunfisk, which Barbox looks okay. It looks kind of like a silver fish, which isn't actually a fish. But uh, yeah, Barboach, pretty okay looking. Whiskash looks like something that you would find in like a kid's book that's guarding some sort of treasure. Very creepy. But Barboach ain't nothing that Dimitri can't handle. One hit knockout. We're very close to having multiple level ups on the team, which I liked. And Dimitri was so amazing. Was able to knock it out in one shot. Okay, so we have Gyarados here. Steven would be an easy choice, but it's also not super exciting to watch. So we'll use Miguel instead. This is probably a poor choice, but that's okay. My life is full of it. But what's life if you can't uh, make some questionable choices? Here's Gyarados, one of my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon. Absolutely amazing. Very strong. We'll go ahead and hit it with some Nightshade. It's actually a good move in the early phases of this game because 31 HP is quite a bit but oddly enough at no substitute so for those of you who've maybe played the early games Mr. Mime was a substitute embracer from the early series it essentially creates a a doll that takes damage for the opposing Pokemon in the, in the moment and in doing so you won't eat any damage although you have to essentially as a substitute, you have to devote some of your HP. Now, Scald's a cool move. It is a water type move that has the potential to burn, which I think is really interesting. Now, Gyarados ain't nothing special. And we'll heal some with our Shell Bell. So, Miguel did a pretty nice job. We'll get quite a bit of experience from that. And Fisher Eric. It's all dried up. So there we go. We're gonna hit this final button. I think this should give us access to maybe where we're supposed to be going. Okay. I don't know if we hit this button yet. Or if we wanna hit that button. I'm not entirely sure what this puzzle is supposed to be like, so I am just kind of messing around a little bit to see what I'm supposed to be doing. There's a button here. This is probably just gonna wind up turning into <laughs> Another situation where I can't figure out where I'm going. And then I'm just gonna cut away. Did I go up here? I did not. So we do have one more fight. Okay. Thank goodness, I would have missed a trainer. You can't have that. This gym's actually got quite a few, like I was saying. Wasn't sure if four was the most that you would experience in a gym. But clearly that's not the case here. I think this is our sixth fight, which are going pretty swimmingly, thankfully. Not an entire episode of fights. Once again, wouldn't want that. But we're doing okay. These fights within the gyms aren't too bad. At least they are themed, which is kind of cool. I have no idea what's happening right now. Okay, so it's just rain being introduced. We know what that is, thankfully. But it's winter time, so we're more akin to beginning snow. I always think that it's the idea that a Pokemon can control the weather, like these type of Pokemon, in the case of like a Shellos, is weird. But you know, like a Groudon or a Kyogre being deities of land and sea. Those ones being able to control the weather makes more sense to me. I mean, like in general, it's very strange, but you know, it's, I, I guess I can accept it if, if that's the case. Just in general, I struggle to kind of wrap my head around it my very small, insignificant brain. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm still trying to figure out who exactly I want to have on my team. I know two of the three. I'm not entirely sure who the third is going to be. And Steven wants to learn Volt Switch after I just taught it Thunderbolt. That's awesome. Great. Uh, I mean, it's a good move. But we already learned Thunderbolt, and I don't really want Steven going anywhere. He's pretty darn good, so we'll stick with Steven for now. And we'll give Brandy one last lick of screen time. So hopefully 
This has been exciting enough. Ooh, a different shell offs. That's cool. That's the... I'm not sure which is which. I want to say this is the eastern variety and that the pink one that we had before as Samuel was the western variety, but I could be wrong. But it is confused nonetheless. I think this one actually looks cooler. I don't remember exactly what Gastrodon from the blue shell loss looks like, but I do know that Brainy wants to be petted. Like it's a it's a it's a psychic disc that floats. Does it have like does it have personality? Does it have sentience? Like what's going on here? Oh alright. Well, I don't have time for this. This last fight is going to be donezo here in a moment, so that way this video does not drag on. I wasn't expecting to go into a gym battle so soon, but I guess there was some padding in between with heading down to Pastoria. It does take a little bit of a little bit of time to get you there, so I guess we were due for one. We were due for. So it's nice. What's good though is once we finish this. We'll have four gym badges. We'll be effectively halfway through the game in terms of badges. Not sure about where things fall in the narrative. But at the very least, we've got this going for us. So that's fun. We get Brandy to level up that just absurd defensive duo. And she wants she wants to learn Heavy Slam. What is Heavy Slam? User slams its target with its heavy body. The more the user outweighs the target, the greater the moves power. So that would replace Gyro Ball, which is the user tackles the target with a high spin. The slower the user... Oh, I thought that was about weight. Oh. So Brady's pretty slow. But I do think that Heavy Slam is more preferable, because once Brady evolves, Brady's going to be thick. And Brady already weighs like 200 pounds. It's a weird floating desk. What's keeping it in the air? I don't know. Did he say he didn't wash his hands? At least use hand sanitizer, Samson. Gross. Okay. So I think that that last switch should bring us to Crash Awake. Can we not? Okay, I got, I got stuck on it and I was like, what is happening? Did I fight you? I did. Okay, so thankfully that puzzle wasn't too bad. But before the Crash Awake fight, which I do believe there will be three of them, as per usual, we're gonna go ahead and hit the box. Can I not? Wait. Can I not hit the box? Wait, am I stuck here? Wait. Oh. Well, it appears that I have to do that outside of the gym. So that's a bit of a but. Well, let's just go ahead and say that I have the three that I need. Which in this case we'll use... We won't lead with Steven. We'll lead with, with Bart. We'll have Steven. And then we'll have Dimitri. I won't use Miguel, Scarlet, or Brandy. So if these three at any point get knocked out, I'll just consider it a wipe. Just to be fair. And I will go ahead and heal up Dimitri. Tippy top. Actually, you know what? Let's lead with Dimitri. Let's have let's have some fun. It's not exactly going to be effective against anything in particular, but that's usually okay with the first trainer. So let's go ahead and take on Crash Awake. He has a bit of a, a weird wrestling mask. I'm not sure if that's his hair. Kind of molded into his eyebrows or what? Kind of like the Bane mask going on. But he is the representative of the water type. So here we go. I love the gym leader music in this game. It's so good. And they did put it in to Arceus Legends a little bit, which I think is fun. There is definitely reminiscent elements of this game and its soundtrack in it. Let's start with the Phantom Force and see where that gets us. Okay, this is gonna hurt. That's not cool. But that's okay. Dimitri wasn't really supposed to be a heavy hitter here. I wasn't expecting much to be done, but that's okay. Hopefully we don't wipe, that'd be great. We'll do a decent amount, a, a pretty good chunk. That's fair. I wonder if Shadow Ball does more. I don't remember if Shadow Ball or Phantom Force is better, but Dimitri's hanging in there. I don't think this is gonna be enough to knock it out, but pretty close. Okay. So we'll just go ahead and use Dimitri as a free turn. I'm feeling pretty good about our chances with the other two that we brought. Okay. So 
But like I said, if things don't go well with these two, I will go ahead and consider it a wipe. And we'll move on. Actually, I should have... Oop. Should have put, go ahead and put in uh, Steven. This is a poor choice. Wasting a turn? Great. We should be okay, though. Unless this Gyarados knows Earthquake and then I'm doomed. But we do know Intimidate, so... We can Intimidate this Gyarados. Oh, it knows Ice Fang. Ooh, that could have been danger for, for Bart. Oh, we're frozen? Really? All right, that's a little cheap. <laughs> it melted the ice with its determination. Great, whatever. I don't need help game in this children's... This children's entertainment. But anyway, Gyarados is done. I guess this is kind of nice. We're going to get experience for the rest of the team, although I don't really need it. Dimitri won't, because Dimitri's dead. But, you know. All right, so here we go, Quagsire. Quagsire is the evolution of Wooper. It is the water ground type representative from... Gold and silver. I'm not entirely sure what Quagsire is. I know that it's very goofy looking. I, I can tell you that for sure. That's about the best I can tell you. And it should be four times weak to Giga Drain, so that's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Two down, one more. Now it's time for us to see Crash Awake's big ace, which is Floatzel. So we also have a Floatzel. That's Buster. Pretty cool Pokemon. I love Weasel. He's a great introduction. Also, he has watery watery stickers on his balls. We love that. So it does no Ice Fang, which is not very kind to Bart. And it was a critical hit. So I don't like that. We're gonna go down to Mono a Mono here. Steven versus Floatzel. Floatzel's pretty fast, so hopefully we'll be able to knock it down a peg with a nice Thunderbolt. Hopefully the game does not cheese it. He does Brian, I don't know. That's a water move, I think? I don't know. But this might do it. It does. Steven and its powerful Thunderbolt. Enough to knock it down in one try. No resets, everybody. And that is Crasher Quake. We did it! And now we can use the HM for Defog. Oh, thank goodness. So that'll do it, everybody. Crash awake. We're not getting sucked into that undertow. I was actually going to make an undertow joke right as they made one, but... Oh, my badges are dirty already? I just polished them the other time. That's okay. We got the Fen badge. I don't know what a Fen is, but we got it. And using Defog is something you'll want to, especially as we head into the mountainous areas of Sinnoh and Stickers. Probably should use those eventually, I will. And I believe this is Brine. Yes. So, there you go. If you need to finish off a Pokemon, you sure can. Using Brine is potentially a good way to do it. So here we are, asserting dominance against Crasher Wake after we took him out. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, and I'll see you next time. Bye.